What's up everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. It is about 147 degrees out here today, so I probably shouldn't be out here making this video, but I bought a brand new toy kind of on a whim late last night and I just had to come play with it. This is the Gamo 177 caliber air rifle. Now this was refurbished, so I got a pretty good deal on it. It was cheap. It was like a hundred bucks, so I just went ahead and picked it up. And honestly, what turned me on to this was the advertised velocity that they're showing on top of the receiver there. You definitely can't see it, but it says velocity 1300 feet per second. I don't know a whole lot about air rifles, but I think that's pretty screaming for a 177 caliber pellet. So like I said, it's very basic, super cheap, and I'm sure that there are obviously much higher quality air rifles out there than this, but the advertised velocity was the main thing I was interested in, and it looks like this is gonna give us that. The first thing that came to my mind is 1300 feet per second. That's pretty similar to a 22 long rifle. So you guessed it, we brought out the Ruger 1022 and we're going to compare these two rifles and just see what the difference is between a 1300 feet per second air rifle and a 1300 feet per second real rifle. So I do have some 22 long rifle ammo that's advertised at around 1300 feet per second so it should be a pretty interesting comparison. Now the obvious problem with this is the Ruger 1022 shoots a 22 caliber bullet and the air rifle here is shooting a 177 caliber pellet. So that's why I brought this out. This is a 22 caliber air rifle uh, very similar to the Gamo that I just bought. Obviously it doesn't have the big Big faux suppressor looking thing on the end of it but they do look like they're probably a uh, similar quality so now like I said the 177 caliber gun is advertised at 1300 feet per second and that's pretty standard for a 22 long rifle as well they do make hotter loads than that obviously but 1300 is pretty average for a 22 now this bad boy the 22 caliber air rifle is advertised at around 950 to a thousand feet per second so we got some 950 feet per second 22 long rifle ammo Let's see where our scopes at real quick Check them out. It is entirely too hot out here today. All right, so I got my truck back at about 20 yards. You can see our target right here and my truck right there. Obviously with a real gun, I'd probably step back a little further, but I think 20 is a good distance for a little air rifle like this. So when I got the gun home, I just took it out of the box and put the scope on. These are actually the first three shots that I've taken. So it looks like we have two of them on the paper and I don't see the third one. <laughs> So it doesn't look like I got two in the same hole. Usually you can kind of tell if you get that. We either got two like in the exact same hole or we have one that's a really bad flyer. There's other holes on the box, so I can't really tell uh, where that third shot went, but that's interesting. I'm not expecting the gun to be super accurate, obviously, but I wouldn't expect a 10 inch difference either. That would be kind of crazy. Well, that was very interesting trying to sight that rifle in. I imagine it has a lot to do with the $5 scope that's sitting on top of it. With a better scope, it'd probably be a little bit easier. But here is our results. So our first few were over here. Um, I tried to raise it up. I think I went the wrong way. I actually dropped it, and then we ended up right there. We got one of them right on the X, and then four or five more about an inch or two below it. So that is good enough for me for what i want to do with this gun let's start testing this bad boy well now that we've sighted this thing in we're going down into the woods it is just too hot out here whoa oh man it's amazing how much cooler it is down here in the woods than out there in the sun holy crap all right chronograph with the new wildcat whisper 177. So I'm super impressed, I'm not gonna lie. I did not expect the velocity to be that close to what they advertise. So you guys can see the front of the chronograph here and you see it says 1,237 feet per second. I believe that was actually the slowest one. We had one that got up to like 1,275 or something like that. So a lot more velocity than I was expecting. If you're curious on the pellets I was using, they are these RWS Superdome. They look like they're German or something. Um, Field line 177 RWS Superdome. I really don't know. My brother-in-law had them in the barn. So either way, pretty impressive. And chronograph with the 22 caliber air rifle. sure is smacking that wood behind the chronograph. <laughs> so there you can see 960 feet per second 
and both guns were actually really close to the advertised velocity. The 22 caliber pellets I was using are just these, the, the Crossman pointy tip, like the most basic pellets you can find these literally everywhere. Um, and they were right around that 950 to 970 feet per second range. So I'm not gonna chronograph the 22 long rifle. I've done that a bunch and usually it gets really close to the velocity that's advertised on the box out of that Ruger 1022 anyway. So we're gonna skip the chrono with the 22 long rifle. I was just curious about those two air rifles and I'm impressed. So this is what I'm really curious about. I got my 10% ballistic shell block on the table down there and we're gonna compare these air rifles with the 22 long rifle. I think we're actually gonna see a pretty big difference just because of the weight of the projectiles. The 22 long rifle is around 40 grains give or take a few and I'm not really sure what these pellets are they don't say but they feel really lightweight and the lead is just so soft you can like smash it in between two fingers so I got a bunch of different 22 long rifle like I said both to match the 1300 feet per second 177 and the 950 to 1000 feet per second uh, 22 caliber air rifle and although the velocities are very similar I don't think the performance is gonna be now obviously there's a million different kinds of pellets you could get I'm sure there's you know pellets out there that are way better for this kind of stuff and we'll do a lot Lot more damage there's also different caliber air guns and there's air guns out there that will take down giant animals so this isn't like a you know all-encompassing air gun versus real gun debate this is just these two that i have access to and i don't think the air guns are going to compete with the 22 long rifle let's see all right we're going to start with the wildcat whisper that's the new one i bought i don't know if i told you guys the name of the rifle in the beginning it is the wildcat whisper I imagine because of the suppressor thing on the end of it there, it's supposed to be really quiet. And the first pellet we're gonna shoot is the RWS Superdome that we shot in the chronograph test. So let's see what it does. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of nervous about placing these in the gel because I'm just not really used to these scopes yet, but we'll give it a shot. So I just want to say that I did not put on my eye protection for that, and that is incredibly stupid. I think it's even more important with these air rifles to wear eye protection because pellets and BBs tend to ricochet like crazy. So I'm an idiot. Sorry about that. But here is where our first 177 caliber pellet went in, right there. Kind of hard to see. Very small hole, obviously. Well, for some reason, this is really hard to see on camera, but in real life, it's not. So I don't know what that's about. But you can see, hopefully, uh, that wound cavity from our pellet right there. And then it continued down the gel block and came to a stop right there. Actually got quite a bit of penetration in that 10% ballistic gel block. And our first 177 caliber pellet stopped at about 8 inches into our ballistic gel block. So, like I said, that's impressive. I didn't even expect it to get that much penetration, so... That would do some damage. All right, next we're gonna shoot the Daisy Precision Max. It's a pointed little sucker, so maybe it'll help give it more penetration. I don't know, let's see. I'm really trying to place my shots in the gel block here because we have quite a few rounds to put in this thing, so I'm gonna try to put this one a little higher. Nice. So we can actually see this one from the top of the gel block. You can see it right there on the top. And hopefully you guys can see the first one that we shot down there underneath it. So it definitely looks like the pointed daisy pellet did not get as much penetration as the first one that we shot. And the pointed daisy stopped at six and a half inches into our ballistic shell. All right, moving on to the 22 caliber air rifle. The first pellet we're going to shoot is the copperhead. And these are really old and really oxidized, as you can see. It's just a flat face pellet. And I wasn't going to shoot these, but we only have two, so... I figured we might as well shoot one of these and one of the others. All right, let's see what it does. I think just off weight alone, this will probably get more penetration than the 177, even though it's going you know, quite a bit slower. Let's see. Boy, it's hot out here, y'all. Don't know where to aim with this one. Probably a little lower. A little lower. So I was kind of wrong about the 22, at least for this first one that we shot, but you can see the entrance hole right there. It's the one on the very bottom. And then over here, for some reason, the camera's having trouble focusing on this. I don't know why, but the 22, there we go, <laughs> like clockwork. But the 22 is the one on the very bottom there, and you can see that it got less penetration than either of the first two. But the big difference here, and I don't know if you guys can see it, is the damage that it did in the ballistic shell. I have a feeling you cannot see that, but where that 22 caliber pellet stopped, there's actually a pretty big wound cavity there and the 177s do not have that. So it didn't penetrate as far as the first two, but definitely did more damage than either one of them. I imagine the slow-mo is probably pretty boring on this one. I got my cameras down there, but I don't know if I'm gonna show you guys a lot of this slow-mo because it's you know pretty uneventful, I would imagine. So next up we have the 22 caliber 
Crossman, and this is an actual pointy pellet, so maybe this will do a little bit more damage. Also, keep in mind that first one was like 100 years old. Those you know pellets could have been in bad shape. So let's try this one. Looks like it'll do better to me. Let's see. Oh yeah. I literally can't even put my glasses on for like 30 seconds to take the shots without them fogging up and sweating like crazy all over the place. All right, so I tried to flip the gel block over. I was hoping I could show you guys that way, but the glare from the sky is just too much and it's super hard to film this gel today. So the second 22 long rifle pellet went in <laughs> just to the left of the other three. And then over here, the sun just went away. So hopefully you guys can see that. But the pointy 22 pellet went in about the same spot as our 177 did right there. But you can see that wound cavity went all the way down to about right there. And then it bounced back an inch or two into the gel block. But definitely got the most penetration out of the bunch and did 10 times better than the first 22 that we shot. So including the wound cavity, that second 22 stopped at about 10 inches, maybe just a hair under 10 inches. And the first 22 stopped at right around six inches. But one thing that is consistent with the 22s compared to the 177s is um, they're getting bounced back in the gel, which kind of tells me that they're probably, you know, hitting harder and dumping more energy than the 177s are. They're also doing quite a bit more damage in there as well. All right, now we're moving on to the Ruger 1022, and I think we're gonna see a pretty big difference with the 22 long rifle. So first we're gonna shoot the American Eagle 40 grain solid, and this is the one that I got to kind of compare to the 1300 feet per second uh, 177. It is right around that velocity and I also made sure to get solid lead bullets no copper jackets or copper plated hollow points nothing like that so about the closest comparison we could do with the lead pellets here we go going more towards the left for this one All right, we'll go take a look at that one here in a minute. You guys might have already seen the slow-mo, but next I got the CCI Subsonic Suppressor 22 long rifle. This is going 970 feet per second. So this is pretty much exactly the same velocity as our 22 caliber pellet. And again, it is just a lead bullet. A little lower. Oh my gosh, the fireball on that. I don't know if that was when it hit the gel or coming out of the barrel, but that was crazy. Oh my gosh. So it looks like my suspicions were pretty much correct, at least for this test. So our 22 long rifles went in on the left side of our gel block there. And then over here, thank God the sun went down. Hopefully this will focus a little bit better. It's not a good start. All right, so our first 22 long rifle, the 40 grain solid going 1300 feet per second is the one on top. And look at that wound cavity. That is crazy. The bullet actually went all the way through the 16 inch gel block. So you can see compared to the 1300 feet per second, uh, 177 caliber pellets, it's not even a comparison. I mean, that is super impressive. And then the second one that we shot was the CCI suppressor going 970 feet per second. And you can see the wound cavity from this one. It doesn't look like it did too much damage, but in the first three or four inches, it did actually mess that gel up a little bit. That might be where that big fireball came from. Hopefully the slow-mo will show us that. But even the CCI suppressor compared to those 22 caliber pellets, is quite a big difference and definitely more impressive. So like I suspected, the 22 long rifle just absolutely destroyed these 22 caliber and 177 caliber air guns. But again, keep in mind, there are absolutely pellets out there and there are air guns out there that will do quite a bit more damage than this. This is not an air gun versus real gun video. I mean, it is, but it's not like the ultimate, you know, end all be all for air guns versus real guns. There are some pretty impressive, powerful air guns out there that will do quite a bit of damage. So I gotta say, I'm actually pretty impressed with those air guns, but I'm gonna show you why they just can't compete with a semi-automatic 22. Just not the same firepower.
Well, I can pretty much guarantee that the bees are on their way because those exploded pop cans smell really good. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up right here. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, uh, please let me know down in the comments below. Real quick, I want to thank all of the PayPal supporters that I've gained over these last couple of weeks. You guys are awesome, and I just really appreciate the support. Thank you. Again, if you liked the video, guys, please hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.